TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. There's a little warning screen. Because this season and part of last season, this show has been a little bit spicy. You get me? Uh, so, you know, read it. Read it and weep, YouTube. Uh, don't forget, man, twitch.com is where you can catch any of the live streams. The usernames at the bottom of the screen. And we do got a Patreon where we post five days a week. Sometimes more because Game of Thrones has been on there now. So, you know, we got to get right, you know. Um, this is Camp Pay Will Take It Away Season 5, Episode 6. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Oh, okay, y'all gonna do me like that? Y'all gonna do me like that twice? Research has shown that 1.8 million young people under 25 are falling into financial difficulty as they take their first steps into adult life. A recent survey has shown that over 50% of young adults say they regularly worry about money, while almost a third feel their debts are a heavy burden. I was trying to let y'all see and I ain't even read it for myself, dang. They do not have a plan in place to be Oh, High Court Enforcement Agent Max Carraher and trainee Connor Jackson work all over London and the southeast of England, seizing assets and collecting debts. Where are they at today? What we got first then, mate? This lovely cold morning. We're off to see Mr. Bak Zani. It's 7.30 a.m. and they're in Feltham, West London. Mm -hmm. With a writ to collect nearly two and a half thousand... West London, you could be in the hood or a posh area. We don't know yet. I don't know where thousand Feltham pounds owed by Mr. Bak Zani in unpaid parking fines. It's just up here on the left. left. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there we go. There's an Audi and a... Looks like a BMW. There's someone in my movement. Yeah. If they belong to Mr. Zani, the two vehicles parked outside the property could be seized if he can't or won't pay. Thanks for coming, mate. It's not even going to be eventful because they normally say this is going to be the time of their life. We ain't even here that today. Let's go ahead. Good morning, here to see Bak Zani. Is that you? Yep. Hello, mate. My name's Mr. Carraher. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Go on. Um, this is my colleague, Connor Jackson. We've got a High Court writ for you, Bak. Yeah, go on. Um, go from... Okay. Yeah, go on. Outstanding balance of £2,340.20. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? Make the payment. Well, I can't make a payment. If you can't indeed pay it, um, we've got no other option but to enforce the writ. What does that mean? Removal of goods. From where? The property. This is not my property. Okay, but this is where we've got the writ and you live here. Does it mean it's my property? Yeah, sure, but you'll have goods in here that are yours. This is my mother's property. Mr Zani is listed on the electoral roll at the address. As there is no proof, this isn't his home. Okay, it's trending towards negativity. It's trending towards negativity. The agents have the right to stay and enforce the writ. Now Max turns his attention to the cars in the drive. I want proof of ownership <coughs> of these vehicles. The, which ones? These two vehicles here. They're not mine. They're not yours? Whose are they? You're going to have to find out. Okay, obviously the onus of proof is on yourself, not not us. What about this vehicle here? It's not my vehicle. So you're not going to help me at all. You're not no, going to. I'm just comply saying with it's me. not my vehicle. With Mr. Zani refusing to show evidence that the cars don't belong to him, 
Connor clamps the Audi. And Max inspects the BMW. Hold on, wait, 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 listen, second. listen, I can wait, enter it and I'm going to. This does not belong to me, this Excellent. is what I'm telling can you. Can I see some proofs? Sir? Yes, I can. You Thank you very much. Okay. You can show me that. Listen, oh, that's all I've asked. Listen, it's madam, car, listen. madam if you show me some proof excuse that it's yours. Please, yes, please, it's madam. my car. While Mr. Zani's mother, originally from Albania, argues with Max, Connor spots an open door and the agents take their off. Ah, it's getting peak. The agents is agenting. <laughs> he just snuck to move in there. Opportunity to gain peaceful entry. Listen, listen to me. It's I'm my, listening. it's I'm my listening. house. Mama, it's don't my don't shout at me. L listen, it's yeah, my it's house. house. It's, it's, it's my house. house. Can I see? Proof it's my house. It's not my son's house. He's yeah. not. Madam, we're not leaving. Me. We're not leaving this property. It's very early in the morning. He's here. We've got a high court writ to say he lives here. Yeah. Madam, don't touch us. We'll just call the police, madam, if we get touched. Okay, we're not having that. Can you let us through? Give me phone. No, I can't let you through. Can you let me through? No. Why not? Do you want to find the police, mate? You don't have... Yes, please. Yeah, okay. I, I, I Madam, don't know we've got a right to be here, okay? With Mr. Zani determined not to let the agents go any further than the hallway, Connor calls the police. So I'm a high court enforcement agent. It's the Albanians, though, man. You got to be careful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that lively. in uh, Felton. The uh, quiet police assistance place. But then, Mr. Zani takes drastic action. He picks up a young child and starts to film the agents on his phone. Why are you holding the, the baby? The baby to obstruct us. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's to obstruct you. I think it's very irresponsible you're holding a kid in front of me just to obstruct me, okay? I'm not but, but you, you are You're obstructing me. So what we're going to do is we'll wait here until the police, then they'll tell you to move, okay? That's right. If a person is willing to use a child as a human shield, I really think it's... That is crazy, though. I know it's just like, it's just, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's just like... Uh, debt collectors, but at the same time, the first instinct was to grab a child. That's crazy. There's a lot about that individual. It is. It does. It makes our job more difficult in the sense that we don't want to injure children or get in their way. It's putting a child in such a dangerous position. Moments later, the police arrive <coughs> on the scene. Morning. Mr. Zani puts down the child. We have attended this address to speak this gentleman here. Are you trying to seize the vehicle? We're trying to get a payment for the it's a unpaid parking tickets. My colleague's got the High Court writ as well. He's inside. We need to find out who lives here. Well, I don't live here. This is my mom's property. The property is registered under her, her you, name. Are you mum? Yes. We come in. Well, one second. I'm going to translate for her. With the police now trying to reason with Mr. Zani and his mother, Max decides to take the opportunity to start looking for goods in the house. <laughs> Connor, come in. We're going to start an inventory. We're going to start then, guys. But even with the police present, Mr. Zani still won't let Connor in and is refusing to stand aside. Excuse me. Sorry, one second, Excuse one me, one sir. Second. Don't obstruct me. Do not obstruct me. One second. I'm Do not obstruct me. I'm not obstructing you. You're obstructing me. I'm talking me. to the officer. Mind out your way, please. Okay. Do, do, take your hands off me. Right. I'm coming inside. Oh, sir. Sir, move. Guys, you'll be. It's obstruction of an enforcement agent. Don't push him. This is obstruction of an enforcement agent. We'll be arrested. Wait, no, that's you saying it. No, 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 no Guys, move out of the way, please. No, 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 they not doing nothing. Well, y'all in this for on your own. Come my room. No, no, no. A straightforward debt collection has turned into a highly charged standoff. The case is on a knife edge. Oh, there's more and Max cops. And Connor oh, no, that's must Max. act fast to stop the situation becoming dangerous. That is it. Hey, two thousand. To pay measure. Very irresponsible. This will be a subtraction of an enforcement agent. 
Now, Listen, with the help of the police, cops. the agents must calm the family down and get this debt recovery back on track. Right, guys, can we all move? Okay, we, listen, we don't want to. We don't want to push you. They, they sent Sharon Osborne and I don't know who she looked like, but the other cop looked like Sharon Osborne. Can we arrest you? Honestly, if you do move, you'll be arrested. Madam, please move. Nobody wants to do this. I do not want to arrest you. But Why? Do not move. For us. Just for us. At risk of being arrested, the debtor's mother finally lets Max and Connor pass. But they're in for a disappointment. There's nothing inside the house worth seizing of any value. The best option for us here is going to be to remove the vehicle. That's what we'll go for. The police run a check on the cars outside. To get I'm gonna be. <laughs> they, they didn't even really try to finesse him out of a payment. Like, are you sure you can't call nobody? Blah blah blah. They ain't even. To the bottom of who owns them. But then, a woman leaves the house with the child Mr. Zani was holding earlier, and sits in the clamped Audi. Connor, you've climbed the vehicle. Yeah, I ain't got anybody. And they're sitting there with a baby. They're sitting there. Yeah. Um, why not? Why not? I just think it's very <coughs> unsafe. The lengths that some people will go to to avoid paying a parking fine, all the police time they're wasting, it's ridiculous. The more they do that, the more I want to succeed on enforcing a rip. <laughs> Moments later, the agents receive news from the police, connecting Mr. Zani with the clamped Audi. Another insured driver of Mr. Baxani. That Baxani. The Audi. And that's the Audi. Is he, is he just named on the Audi, is he? Yes. As Mr. Zani is an insured driver on the silver Audi and hasn't been able to provide any evidence to show that he doesn't own the car, the agents can seize it. Despite the fact that that's a woman and child are sitting sitter, in man. the car, Max must continue to process the vehicle as a potential asset. He calls the office to check if it's free of finance. Hi, uh, can I get a HPI check, please? It's Max here. Yeah. Mr. Clear of Finance, ODA check. Yeah. She's going to have to get up out of there. Kid and all. It's tough, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> yep. These people are wild. I'm not gonna lie. They're continuously using their child as a weapon, like a phone. I go like, yeah, as a weapon. Like that's, I would never. My daughter wouldn't even be in the same room. You know what I'm saying? With help from the police, the agents persuade the woman to step out of the clamped Audi. I've got the paperwork. I have you, good man. That will add to the value. And Max calls a tow truck to remove the vehicle car will definitely cover the removal costs. As Max and Connor are no longer being obstructed, the police leave. All the agents can do now is wait for the removal truck to arrive. They should have waited, <laughs> the police. But minutes later, just when the agents think things have calmed down, Connor spots Mr. Zani tampering with the clamped vehicle. He's doing something down the side of that car. Is he? Yeah, I don't know what. Let me go have a look. Mr. Zani has tied the rear wheel of the car to a nearby tree. Right, they're strapping it. Call the police again. So Connor gets straight back on the phone to the police. Does he not understand what obstruction is? Probably not. All right, can I get the police, please? Thank you. If you could send some somebody over sort of as soon as possible so we can get this. Thank you. Minutes later, the same police officers who were they in the address back. moments earlier return to the they scene. They should have never left, honestly. They Only just this waited. time, Mr. Zani has recruited a neighbour and a friend as backup. What are they going to do? You're preventing us from remo re removing our vehicle. Property's not yours. All for it, cutting me. The situation is at a stalemate, but then 
the recovery vehicle arrives. Yeah, ain't no stalemate. They finna lift, they finna lift this up with the tree connected to it. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Trucks here. Hello. Hi, are you all right? But with a thick strap tied to the rear wheel, removing the car isn't going to be straightforward. It's attached to his car. It's still attached to his car. I want to see who's going to clap that rope. That's a 50 quid rope. But Connor thinks on his feet. So let's take the wheel off. Absolutely, we can do that, yeah. Then will you be able to get it on the vehicle still? Yeah. Excellent. Can we crack on with that now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wheel's coming off. Let's go. You're going to damage the vehicle, though. That's not how you do it. Don't touch or interfere, okay? Right. You've got to change the you're wheel right. on the car. Once I get this car back, you're paying for it, dog. You're going to pay for it, I promise you. Forget about it, you're not Good getting work. that car back. Unintimidated you by Mr. Zari, the recovery assistant changes the wheel, and the Audi can now be seized. But to be sure that Mr. Zani and his family can't obstruct them any further, the agents must now act fast. What are these Just cops? Move the tow truck off onto the road out the way. What the are these cops here for? They're literally doing nothing. Like go, home. just. Yeah, let's go. Let's move the vehicle. Up. Connor um, instructs the recovery vehicle to leave the drive before moving the Audi away from the house. As soon as we get parked up, we can start loading it. Literally, we want it. We want to load this up as quick as possible. Max and Connor's perseverance has paid off. Almost five hours since they first arrived, the agents... Five hours. They arrived at 7.30 a.m. It's 12.30. ...have a vehicle yeah. as part payment towards Mr. Zani's debt. That was quick thinking on my part, that one. Change the tyre. Very difficult one. They try sneaky little tricks like that to stop us from moving vehicles, but unfortunately... If you have a debt to pay and you're going to behave like that, it just motivates us further to recover the asset. Mr. Zani has... That's what I be saying, man. If you just chill out and try to work with them, they might let you slide. You know what I'm saying? But now you want to take this hard, wrong, this hard pause. I was about to say something crazy. The most difficult route possible. And now look. ...has 14 days to prove that the car isn't his. If he can, the car will be returned. But the debt will still be outstanding. And so the agents will be back. A recent survey by a leading charity reveals that families with children are more than twice as likely to be in debt than those without. One in five families with children in England and Wales have struggled with debt problems in the last year, with almost a third owing more than £5,000. Fake news, almost everybody got High debt Court now. Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Colm, Lancashire. I feel like we ain't seen Stuart in a minute. Right, Vic, enlighten me. What are we doing at this part of the country on a beautiful morning? We are going to see Mr. James Longworth and Mrs. Terran Longworth. They need to pay us £3,991. The debtors, a married couple, owe the money to a nursery for unpaid childcare fees. Keep rolling, my good friend. It looks to be that one there with the castle outside. The nursery took the case to the county court, but then escalated it to the high court, and Mr. and Mrs. Longworth must pay today. Hello. Hi, mate. You all right? Yeah, I'll, I'll stay here at the moment, I'll sir. Outside, I'll please. stay here at the moment, sir. I'll just ring the police, please. Yeah, ring the police, no problem at all. Um, we're after James. Yeah, and that's me. Is that yourself? Yeah. We're high court enforcement agents, sir. We've got high court writ, sir. 
Yeah, the nursery. Is it a nursery for you, yeah, is it? which we're under dispute with, with the nursery themselves. Right. Well, we're here to collect £3,991. Right. If not, we are instructed to remove goods, mate. Sorry, I'm shaking. Cause no, I'm, no, don't I'm worry about up, it. Right, because yeah. I knew this was coming. Yeah. Which is why I've got wound up about it. Yeah, no, no, don't right. worry. Right, I am in dispute with the nursery because they was getting tax credit help. They've turned around and said, no, we're not getting it. Mr Longworth claims the nursery received tax credit contributions towards their childcare costs directly from the government. But the nursery denies this, and the courts have found in their favour. Yeah. Can't pay three grand, I don't even earn it's that fucking much. Step outside. I'll, I'll, I'll be staying here at the moment, mate. Right? Tars, can you ring the place? I've got people on property I have asked to leave. They haven't had permission to enter. Do you have... Entered well, we haven't forcefully entered at all. We don't you need have. your consent, so we've got High Court written, the door was unlocked. Everyone's got a right to protect the property. Nobody wants somebody walking onto their property with an intent to remove goods, but we are like a dog with a bone. Nothing's going to deter us, and we will stay there until the end. Pause. With Mr Longworth refusing entry... Stuart turns his attention to the car parked outside. I will stick a mobilisation on it. He calls the office for a vehicle check. All right. right. Could you do HPI for me? Or for plate the cast off. Refine out. Fine. Yeah. All right, Helen. Speak to you later. Bye. Hopefully we can use it as a bargain and ship to try and get some payments. Sadly, it's what we're in the business to do. But before the agents can negotiate with Mr. Longworth again, the police arrive. Did you clamp it? Morning, officers. You're all right. That's the selves, officer. High court enforcement agents. We've entered this bit of the porch. We've knocked on the door. He's asked us to get out. We've got a writ of control. Uh, made him aware he needs to make payment or we're going to remove goods. He's phoned yourselves. So he probably wants a bit of reassurance. That's all. Second one today, this. Hello, it's the police. The agents hope the police will help Mr. Longworth understand you gotta remember the police is on their side. Police will leave the door open, low key, for them to walk in, you know. No? They have the authority to enforce the writs here today. Basically, the police is giving them the government website to see what our powers are. You can ask me, I can tell him. But even with the police present, Mr. Longworth is still disputing the writ. We were under the impression that they got paid by tax credits. Okay, you don't have proof you haven't, they haven't been paid? No. Right, so let's cut this whole conversation short. They've got proof they haven't been paid. I haven't got £3,000. <coughs> Last month we were on the verge of losing the house. Yeah. We had to put my entire monthly wage <coughs> and my wife's entire monthly wage into paying the rent just to keep the property. We're lucky if we get £1,500 a month between us. And that's to live with two kids. For me to pay three thousand pound right it's now is impossible. Just... I can't do it. <laughs> right. I'm struggling to get through the rest of the week. I've just used our last pound to buy a loaf of bread. It seems that the family. Yeah, man, it's all I did down bad. Have fallen on hard times. There's the time, man, to be a a good enforcement agent and understand the situation. The agents need to get inside the house to assess their situation and resolve the case. But Mr Longworth still won't let them in. I'll stand here and keep the door locked. If, if, well, you can do that. If you want to be difficult, yeah. I tell no, you, if you want I'm to be difficult, to be no, difficult. no, no, I'm not going to waste my time, no, mate. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm, no. just, I'm just trying to find no. out where I stand exactly. I'll, I'll well, explain to you exactly their powers. It's up to you if you want to work with us or not. It's very important for us to get into the property for various reasons. If they have got no assets, we're not going to take their word for it, unfortunately. We have to see it. Minutes later, the police are called to another job. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. Realising the agents aren't going to go away, Mr Longworth finally starts to cooperate. You want me to come inside and we'll have a chat? Right, OK. There you go. Basically, we need to prove that you only earn so much. I can show you on here. That's our tax credits every week, child benefit. No, they're about to walk around. <laughs> you can show them what you want. They're gonna take a look. They're gonna take a gander. Veggies. <laughs> what, what is it that you do, James? I'm a chef. Do you work for the same company? Yeah, he's a chef. I'm a pot washer. It's that bad, isn't it? That's the collapse until the end of next week. It's clear the couple don't have. Mm, 
that's crazy. Y'all both work at the same job, so y'all both knew neither one of y'all was getting real money, and y'all decided to start a family together. Listen. They say love don't cost a thing. Well, it's, it's costing y'all y'all peace of mind. Of the means to pay anything Potentially close a car. to the £4,000 they owe today. The agent's only hope of recovering some of the money Mr. Longworth owes is by taking his car. I do 50 hours a week, she does 30 hours a week. Just normal, average job, working class family that can't afford to live because all the smackheads are too busy claiming every penny off the government, which leaves us with absolutely nothing. Stuart calls the office to see whether the claimant wants the agents to take the car. What's the value on it? <laughs> Probably get about 400 at auction, it'll cover our it's recovery not costs, really but worth not much it. left over for the claimant. Removing the car will be of no financial benefit to the claimant and could jeopardise Mr Longworth's job. So Stuart throws him a lifeline. The vehicle's not being removed, mate. The vehicle's not it, being it's removed. going to put you in more debt. But we're not here to do that. All the agents can do now is to work out a payment plan with Mr. Longworth. So we need sort some sort of payment plan out. Fifty pound a month, hundred pound a month. I don't yeah. care. Are you proposing a hundred pound a month? Yeah. Let me have a quick call to the office. Try my best to get this accepted. Then we can leave you to get on the rest of your day. Yeah. All right. It will be up to the claimant whether they'll accept Mr. Longworth's offer of a hundred pounds a month. I'm not happy the hundred pound a month last I think minutes they will accept is two hundred pound a month, not the last. Thank you. The offer isn't I ain't gonna lie, two hundred might be a stretch for them. They they only making fifteen. Enough. What they've said is they want two hundred a month, the claimant. Two hundred. Two hundred. Is that something that you can reach to? Or or try it for three months, see where you stand and then phone us again in three I'll months. Try it for three months. Two hundred a month with a three month review, Vic. The case is resolved for now. But if Mr. Longworth defaults on his payment plan, the agent... I just got something in my bones. Mr. Longworth is definitely defaulting. You know what I'm saying? We'll be back at the end. And some new, you know what I'm saying, debt collectors will be at his door. ...will return. If you don't seek that arrangement, we'll come back and we'll remove the vehicle. Mr. Longworth has been given a second chance. But as the debt will take almost two years to pay off, there are tough times ahead. Five to fifty hours a week will be going up to sixty hours a week. Right, take it easy anyway. All right, see you later. He's a decent guy, isn't he? Yeah. Always a story there. Isn't Always it? a story. Stuart and Vic managed to get the best result they could. But in Max and Steve's next case, they uh, face uh, 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 uh. What's doing? a... Hey, more than 160,000 voluntary organisations in the UK. Nearly half of them are small charities, including religious organisations. A recent survey shows that small charities with an income of less than £10,000 could easily be put out of business for good by a low level of debt. The total short-term debt of the UK's voluntary sector is nearly eight billion. Gee, everybody in debt. <laughs> Even the voluntary sector? They doing this for free. How they in debt? High Court Enforcement Agents Steve Pinner and Max Carraher are back on the road. Today, they're in Luton, Bedfordshire, to collect over £8,000 owed by a church ministry. The name of our defaulter is In His Presence Worship Ministry. We're looking to collect a total of £8,412. The church pastors have fallen behind with their rent. It's not a very Christian thing to do, is it? And Max and Steve must collect full payment today. At all. I 
I love it. I feel like the church receives grants and things of that nature from the government, though. And, like, a bunch of other stuff. Hello? Hello? Madam, High Court Enforcement. Here to speak to somebody from In His Presence Worship Ministry. What's your name, miss? My name is Matilda. Matilda. Hello, Matilda. Steve and Max. We've been sent out here to collect commercial rent that's been unpaid. Correct. There's an outstanding balance of £8,412. That's a few months. Matilda, one of the church pastors, is aware of the debt. But the agent's visit has come as a surprise. We didn't know the landlord had taken it that far. We were actually dealing with it. Yeah. So I didn't realise this, you know, he's, he's taken it so far. It's come to us as a shock. Yeah. It was supposed to give us to the end of the month. When we're collecting commercial rent from a place of worship, we do have to be sensitive and I respect everyone's beliefs, but it doesn't matter what organisation you are or what business you run, rent still needs to be paid and it needs to be paid on time. It do, Matilda this is immediately gets the church's deaconess, Irene, on the phone. Yes, deaconess. I've got the gentleman. Okay, speak to him then. Hold on. Hello, Max Carraher speaking. Yes, I need um, some bank details. Oh, who's making the payment, madam? Irene Campbell. How much is it for? The outstanding balance at this moment in time is £8,412. All right, then. Let me see what I can do, yeah? It appears Irene is willing to transfer the money the church owes straight away. OK. OK. Not a problem. Thank you. Cheers. Ten minutes after Max spoke to Irene, he calls the office to Oof. see whether she's made the payment. Good morning, it's Max here. Could I speak to somebody to check a payment for me, please? Or is it too good it's to not be true? true. Okay. No. Keep an eye out for a payment for me, please. Yes, bye. No payment has yet been received. Hello, madam. She but then Irene up. arrives at the church in person. With cash or Convinced something? Convinced the payment has been made. Listen, I've just, yes. listen, I've just transferred Madam, please the don't money shout at me. into okay. the account. Yep. The oh. money's in there. I've got the time when Madam. I put it through. Madam, right? you, haven't paid, you haven't paid us, so have you? Yes, I have. Well, you, hold on. Madam, don't shout. Look, yeah. look, yeah. look, look. L listen to me a sec. Ten what? to one. What, you paid this? You paid yes. our account? Madam, we haven't been told this. We were told we're having problems of it going through. There's no problem. Is there... There it is. With Irene adamant that she has made payment in full, Max calls the office again. There is no money in the account for no. the reference number or in his presence worship. Got it. That's all, that's all I needed you to confirm, that it hasn't hit our account. No. Thank you very much for your time. It appears that Irene has not transferred the money to the agents, so what is but to another church account. You haven't sent it to us, have you? The agents have been on the premises for almost an hour. Irene, you got to send it to the people, not the, the, another account. Now they need to get this case resolved one way or another. And Max's patience is running out. Madam, what I'm doing now is I'm escalating the case, okay, to the sale and removal stage. The outstanding balance now is nine no, I'm not nine thousand. Right. You're supposed to wait. No, I'm not paying nine thousand. You are I'm paying, paying no, nine thousand. You're paying, paying nine thousand and no, eighty-four pounds. No, I'm not. You don't have to. That's fine. I'm paying if, eight thousand no. four hundred and twelve. You're paying nine thousand and eighty-four pounds, madam. No, I'm not. Then we'll remove goods. Take it. Okay. Sorry, we need to crack on. Just to update you, um, they haven't paid our account. They transferred it to another one of their accounts. I'm going to organise for a removal of all of this. We're taking all the chairs and the kit. Max hopes that his threat to remove goods will prompt action. Hello, madam. Your pastor. Okay. His tactic seems to have worked. While they wait for the pastor. Irene tells the agents she thinks the landlord has acted unfairly. How? You listen. Oh my God, Irene. Now listen, you're a woman of God. Please be just and fair. What do you mean he's acted unfair? You owe rent. Pay it. 
<laughs> You're contractually obligated to pay the rent on time every month. Pay it. What do you mean unfair? See the state of the building when we first came in. Then you shouldn't have came in there. You should have went somewhere else. Dark and dingy. It was a pool place. Uh -huh. It was horrible. Okay. We had to do all the walls. We had to take up floors. A short while later, Reverend David Foe Amoni arrives to pay the debt in person. But if you had them, so what were you hooked okay. up so we've got a bit of an issue and we're hoping uh, that you could resolve it. Um, we still haven't got payment yet. Um, we need to take a balance of £9,084 um, and would like that as soon as possible. <laughs> the, rep the veteran back here chilling, ain't he? He ain't said a word the entire time. Um, and would like that as soon as possible. The reverend offers to pay the debt using a prepaid credit card. Prepaid, okay. Max calls the office again. Hello, Helen, it's Max here. Um, it's in regards to making a payment. The payment's gone through, not authorised. The payment's gone through, not authorised? OK. Yeah. OK, not a problem. I'll, uh, I'll call you back. Bye. Yeah, no money's been taken. It won't go through. Once again, no payment has been received. It seems that while there are funds available, the bank won't authorise such a large payment without 48 hours notice. But as the agents are duty bound to try and collect payment in full today, they have no choice but to start seizing goods. Hi. That's messed up from a technicality from the bank. Helen. I feel like they can call and get that overridden. Like, Can you dispatch the large vehicles to us uh, now, please? done everything to prove to you that we've got the money we are paying in it. Certainly, you may have the money, but we haven't received the money. We're dealing with human beings and machines. Yes. What can we do? Okay, so if you have to pack up, please, bring, let them come and take it. Just do, do what you have to do. Please don't take this the wrong way. Here we go, please. veteran. Okay, I understand fully, and you are what I would consider a perfectly respectable person, okay? But you must understand from our point of view, our office says nothing counts until it's in their bank. I don't mean that disrespectfully to you. And this is how they work and this is how they think. It's difficult to enforce the job on someone that is being honest. But at the end of the day, our paperwork says you are commanded to collect. And that's the stickler. And obviously, we're there to collect on behalf of the claimant. So, yes, we have to take our feelings away from the paperwork and just deal with black and white print. Six microphones, some and stands, drum set. One, two, three, four, five. As the agents start to pack up the church's ass. This messed up. Set. Yeah, this one is not, I ain't feeling this one. It's <laughs> ready for removal. Max gets a call it back. It is what it is, but you know. Uh, from the office. It went through. Hey Max, um, we're not going to get with the removal tonight. If you can get the balance cleared by midday tomorrow in um, bank transfer. So okay. midday tomorrow to pay it off in full. If not, if we can. By midday tomorrow, I'll um, arrange for removal vans to get down there and get them moved. I'll get all that wrapped up for you now, Helen. It seems the claimant has thrown the church a lifeline and given the Reverend and his associates more time to pay. You've got until 12 o'clock to make payment in full. I'm not going to remove the goods now. Please don't make me come back, sir. Just call to pay it. Thank you very much for your time. The case is resolved for now. But if the payment is not made by midday tomorrow, yeah, the agents will be back. This is a little calm episode, ain't it? I you know I've I've come to expect negativity this season, and this is it's calm. High streets across the UK are under increasing pressure, and recent increases to business rates are cited as one of the leading causes. Business rates for nearly half a million commercial premises in England will rise to £8.2 billion over the next five years.
High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Bolton, Lancashire to recover a debt owed by a barbershop owner, Abdullahi Gay, to a business rates consultancy. How much does he owe? £3,178.15. Agents first visited Abdullahi two months ago oh, so when this, he agreed okay. to a payment plan of £250 a month. So basically the jig is up. You already agreed one time, you defaulted, now we back. Okay. But he's defaulted and now owes over £3,000. But Abdullahi has already gained a reputation with the agents. I spoke to him on the phone a few weeks ago and he was threatening me. Apparently when another bailiff went, um, must have been about six, seven weeks ago, he called up a few of his pals. They turned up threatened to like, throw him off the car and uh, all sorts of, sort of gangster stuff. Where are we going? I think it's this one on the corner, Faye Barber's. Oh, this is the barbershop, okay. If Abdullahi can't or won't pay, Stuart and Vic have the right to seize company assets to cover the debt. It's spooky in the Hello there, sir. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. A colleague tries to get him on the phone. Where is he? Is he local? Is he your... No, he's just literally left. Ah, oh, right, okay. Like, obviously, he's not here now, is it? So yeah. like, wait outside. We won't, mate, now. He's got on the phone to him, to get down here as quick as he can to make a payment. Hello? Yeah, mate, come to the shop now, please. Because there are people are here again. I call enforcement. We need to speak to him. Oh, is that him on the phone, is it? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, can you leave the shop in the outside? We've got half a We'll be waiting inside at the moment, sir. It's like I said, we no, need to... You don't have to be inside, but we'll have to We are allowed to be here, sir. Yeah. You think I'm fucking there? It's okay, I'm coming there now. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Speak to you in a sec. That boy coming with energy, ain't he? People deal. This is the negativity. They save it for the last moment. A little gift for the end. <laughs> with debt in different ways. Some people break down in tears. Some people get angry. It's just part and parcel of the job. Nobody's ever going to turn around and say, you know what, I think you're great at what you do. I'm going to pay you in full. It's never going to happen. Minutes later, Abdullahi arrives. Hey. Hello there, sir. Yeah, you're all right? Yeah, good. It's regarding this outstanding balance, sir. I spoke with you on the phone myself a few times. I don't need that. Before. Yeah, it's a high court writ, sir. So we're here to remove goods unless we receive they a payment 31. of 3178. Yeah. That's fine, that's all I need to know. We don't allow to take my, my work stuff, though. We can. We don't allow to take my work Yeah, of course we can. Hey? We are, we can, yeah. So that's what we're going to do, sir, I'm afraid. But then, Abdullahi claims that his past offers to pay were refused. Listen to me, I ring, I ring, yeah. I ring the office. Yeah, you did. I offer them, I give you £500 now. But oh, sir, you offered £500, yeah, you know but you me. didn't pay it, sir. And no, didn't ring. I ring, I ring. That's what no, happened. Okay? I, I, so I'm not going around circles. Don't, 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 don't change the story. I'm not changing any story. You don't change the story. You keep on no, saying. No, I tell you. You keep on I tell, saying, no, sir. I ring you. you keep it's on... me ring you. It's me ring you. Yes. Yeah, I ring you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I offer and then you. he said 500 no, no, pounds. Yeah, why didn't you pay it? No, why why didn't you pay it? The guy told me, take your 500 pounds. We don't want your 500 pounds. I never said that. I'm never going to refuse money to anyone. I'm not changing any story. I'm not pointing out now. With the debtor now in direct conflict with Stuart, Will the agents be able to stop the situation spiraling out of control? Well, now we got, got three minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks negative. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor were in Bolton, Lancashire, to too. collect a debt of three thousand pounds owed by Stuart's Bob. patience is very, very, very short. And then he looks like like he got one of those faces where you just it's annoying. So I understand. I get it. The shop owner, Mr. Abdullahi Gay. I don't need that. That's what? Yeah, it's a high court rate, sir. So we're here to remove goods. But the debtor said he couldn't pay. They get anyone. And tempers started to fray. I never said no, that. I'm I, never going to refuse don't money don't to anyone. I'm not changing anything. Don't change the story. story. And don't no, point at me. Now, with the agents no closer to recovering the debt, Vic tries to reason with Abdullahi. Listen to me quickly. 
We are now, okay? Oh, no, 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 come on, calm down. I've listened to you yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Let's resolve the matter here. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can resolve it. Look at me. Look at me. We can work with you today and the claimant and say, look, this is what's on the table. And try and tell the claimant that's the best offer on the table. The bottom line is, you need to raise something now to stop any further action, mate. It's great working in a team with Vic because he's very good at negotiating and I'm very good at making people aware of the consequences of non-payment. He's got the same goals as I have, it's just we do it in slightly different ways. But despite Vic's softer approach, Abdullahi still insists he can't pay. I don't have... I don't have... I don't have I, swear my, I swear my life here. Yeah, I swear my life. My rent on the six pound a week. Here, I can't even make 500 pounds sometimes. It's not easy. It's a new business. I opened like maybe six, seven months ago. Okay. You understand? you got to pay something today. You need to speak to your friends. Try and see what you can do. My, my brother, my brother I, is in Malaysia. Only one person, I don't have no family in UK. I don't have no family, I'm my own, I don't have no family. Only have my girlfriend, my girlfriend don't have nothing. I come here because I married somebody, a girl come and bring me here. Now when we divorce, I don't have nobody. You need to try and raise something. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Did he just tell us he finessed the green card or whatever citizenship that he got out there? He just told us that on live TV. Yeah, I, I finessed it. I got married, I came here, and then divorced her. That's tough. That's not my problem. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, I don't have fuck I don't have no... Yeah. Well, I'll go and get my clipboard and I'll start doing the inventory. All right. With Abdullahi adamant he can't pay, the agents hope the prospect of losing his business assets might change his mind. What are you thinking? Anything of value. What's my value? Like value, couches, chairs. If you take anything here, no worth nothing. It's not going to change my day. If I take that chair or not, it's going to change your day. You need to raise money if you don't want your stuff to go. Collecting debt from small businesses can be quite tricky. In certain cases, the best option is to not remove goods because nine out of ten. I never times really heard him get frustrated. I feel the frustration though. That will close them down. Uh, will rather work with the defendant and let him keep his goods so he can earn money and actually pay the debt off. As Stuart and Vic start to take an inventory, suddenly Abdullahi makes the agents an offer. I can give you two hundred pounds a month. Two fifty. Yeah. A month. Yeah. So I can go with the two fifty. Yeah, I can suggest that. But buddy, we need something today. How much can you raise today? That's seven hundred. Can you raise it today? No, I don't show you my account. If we went online, you see what's there. Nothing there. Right, what can you pay today? Now, hmm? tell me. What 100 pounds. You... No. 100 pounds. 250 a month. Or you can just take this guy to. Stuart calls the office to check the claimant is happy with 100 pounds up front and a payment plan to pay off the balance. It can no, be 100 pounds now and then 250. He ain't got no money. You need to keep to that arrangement, mate. If not, we will have to come back and start all this process again. So are you confident you can carry on with that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, he says he's happy enough with that. All right, cheers. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Finally, Abdullahi hands over... Six dollars for a cut? Man, it's like anywhere from 30 to 100 at a regular barbershop. 100 pounds and signs a controlled goods agreement. But if he doesn't keep up with the £250 a month payment until the debt is cleared, it won't be the last Abdullahi will see of the agents. All right. All right, sir. Take care. See you later, guys. Yeah, and it just... See you later. The goods are now worth nothing anyway, so it's better to get something rather than nothing. We could remove the goods, close his business, uh, Mm. but the claimant's not going to get his money back because he's not going to be able to trade. Hopefully we won't have to come back again. He'll stick to his arrangement. Down. Okay, they made the first payment. Oh, it got dropped. Okay. I 
I bet he did. He didn't look like he was making nothing. Right. Got up out of there, didn't he? All right. Tell a little like, comment, subscribe. I'm gone.